Cisco just came out with their third CCST certification. This is the CCST IT support certification. And I'm going to be going over the certification and the domains and if it's worth taking and comparing it to the other various IT support certifications and the other CCST certifications. So if you're interested in that, make sure to watch this video to the end. Hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy the video. 96.5% of you guys are not subscribed. So please hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy. And yeah. I have a Discord down below with over 100 members. We try to help each other get cert get certified, um, help out with resumes and career advice, and just hang out, talk about IT stuff. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and join. A little overview of the exam. Like I said before, this is the Cisco Certified Support Technician IT Support Certification. They have the CCST Networking uh, uh, Certification. They have the CCST Cybersecurity, and this is the third one. The first two you can do on Skills for All. Take their free course. So looking at skills for all, they have a IT operations category. So I'm assuming they're probably going to combine some of these courses to make the official course for the CCST ICT support. But researching it, I didn't find anything that uh, looked like the official IT support skills for all core, uh, career path. So I'm sure they're going to come out with one. Um, but it is the same price as the other one is uh, is $125. It's 50 minutes to for the exam. I think it's 45 to 50 questions or at least up to that amount, just like the other exams. So the domains are as follows. Let me pull this up. We have IT support, job tasks and responsibilities. So this is uh, fulfilling service level agreements, knowing what that is and key performance indicators. That might be things like how fast you're able to solve an issue or service level agreements, usually how fast you are to respond to an issue. Key performance indicators will be you, how fast you can close tickets and obviously closing tickets as fast as possible and actually resolving the issue is gonna help. Uh, prepare documentation to summarize a customer interaction. That's a, another point of uh, objective one. And then you have described problem solving process, uh, pretty much the steps of solving an IT issue, define the problem, gather information, identify the cause, devise a plan to resolve it, make changes, observe the, re the results. Pretty much that would probably be in a drag and drop question and you just have to say, okay, I do it in this order. Um, the second objective is hardware issues. Um, demonstrate how to follow basic safety procedures. Assist end users in locating parts of their device like, oh, this is the Ethernet port. This is the USB port. That's that's pretty important for IT. Uh, being able to remotely troubleshoot is pretty helpful. Um, the different video ports and identifying cables and like parts of the computer, like the where the hard drive is, the SSD, the RAM, the motherboard, the CPU, all that stuff, Learn knowing where that is at on the computer. And then you have connectivity and uh, resource access issues. That is the third domain, um, pretty much network issues, basic knowledge of uh, common services like Active Directory, cloud-based management, which is like Entra and uh, AWS, things like that. Then you have multi-factor authentication, all that stuff. Uh, troubleshoot commonly encountered connectivity issues with peripherals. Uh, that is like headphones, microphones, external devices, scanners, webcams things like that. So diagnosing um, if those things don't work. And then, uh, yeah, the fourth one is operating system uh, and application issues. This is going to be the actual software of the operating system. Um, let's say assisting users and resolving operating system issues. Uh, that's going to be like if it gets bit lockered, let's say the display is not working, the monitor is not working, uh, Windows application errors things like that, assisting users uh, with Mac operating system issues. So I guess you're expected to know Windows and Mac in this situation, which they did expect that on the other CCSTs. So that would make sense. Um, assist users in resolving mobile device issues with their phones. They probably, there's only uh, a couple bullet points in here. So they're probably not gonna have too many things with that basic phone issues. If you use a phone every day, you'll probably be good in this category. Describe virtualization and cloud terminology and assist users in resolving calming application issues. And then the fifth domain is common threats and preventions, basic cybersecurity, security threats, end user training, recognize uh, how to avoid becoming a victim of social engineering, basic security um, measures that you'll get taught in most IT courses. The last one we have is job tools. There's only uh, two subdomains in here. There's 6.1, 6.2. Uh, use remote access software to connect to end user devices and perform remote support tasks. So that's talking about like remote desktop, uh, team viewer, VNC, remote management, pretty much being able to remote into computers. 
um, and use the appropriate troubleshooting tools to research an issue and update internal documentation with findings. They actually have AI baked into this. Um, the first bullet point is AI query AI to research an issue, limitations of AI, ethical considerations for AI, privacy and security risks. I did not expect Cisco to have AI baked into the CCST, but I shouldn't be surprised. Um, Using search engine results, technical forums, knowledge base, um, things like that, ticketing systems. So that is the domains of the CCST IT support. Um, definitely different than the other two. Uh, it seems just like the uh, ITF plus just a little more uh, modern, uh, but it sounds like an ITF plus type of exam. The ITF plus is the CompTIA uh, IT fundamentals exam. I did pass that one. A um, couple years ago, and that was pretty much what this exam covers based on the objectives. So now let's compare the this cert to other certifications. Um, compared to the cybersecurity and networking, um, this certification is definitely more hardware operating system based than the other two. Um, but the thing is, networking and cybersecurity, they kind of already expect you to know these things if you're taking a networking or cybersecurity certification. So if you're completely new to IT, this might be the one you would go for. As far as pricing, all the CCST exams are the same. Uh, the CompTIA ITF Plus is a little more expensive. I think it's like $138. This one's $125. Not a big difference. The ITF Plus, I believe, has more questions, though, um, and has a more, uh, I guess, it's been around for longer, so it has more of a base, and more people will know about it than the CCST IT support. Um, it's 300 bucks less than the A+, so I guess that's a good thing, but the A+, is definitely more recognized than the uh, CompT or sorry, that's uh, CCST, and then the Google IT support certification is fifty bucks a month. So if you finish it in two months, it's actually cheaper than this exam. And in my opinion, Google IT support certification is pretty recognized nowadays. Um, Google has been doing a really good job with their uh, certifications. And if you were to actually get certifications with Google, or if you want to get an IT support, I'd probably recommend Google. Um, because it could be cheaper and it's also more affordable because you don't have to pay it all at once. But the Google IT support, I also took that one. That probably goes in more depth than this certification because you actually have to do hands-on labs, hands-on configuration, and it teaches you Linux, teaches you IT support, it teaches, teaches you all kinds of things. It's an interactive course. So definitely would probably recommend Google IT support over this if you did want to get into IT support. It's kind of weird coming from Cisco. Cisco is a networking and cybersecurity company mainly. So them coming out with a networking certification, cybersecurity certification makes sense because they actually own Cisco proprietary networking devices and protocols and they have firewalls and they have security protocols. So Cisco having those two certifications makes sense. IT support's a little different from them. I My guess is probably to try to compete with Google and the other like Coursera all these other certifications that are now coming out and getting recognized they're trying to uh, give in their two cents so that is kind of my take on this certification now the real question is it worth it if it's paid for like you're not going to pay for it yeah it's worth it um if you don't have any other certification and you're thinking this might be your first one i would say no do the google it support one you'll thank me later um another thing is low recognition from the other two ccsts that i've done I haven't got much recognition with those. Uh, those two, obviously, the CCNA is way higher. Cisco is a good name, but those two certifications, these certifications haven't been around for long enough. So maybe in a year or two, I might be wrong about this. It might be more recognized, more employers ask for it. But I've almost seen no employers actually specify CCST in their job titles. I've searched CCST in uh, LinkedIn, Indeed. Haven't really seen it on any job descriptions. Mostly it's just CCNA. But uh, one reason why it might, might, might be worth it is you can take their Skills for All course for free online. And you do get little cert uh, certificates as you complete those courses. So you could show that on LinkedIn. And then if you want to, you can take this exam for 125. Um, if you're planning on uh, pursuing other Cisco certifications, you might want to take it. But honestly, I don't see the benefit of this certification if... Uh, you have like a CompTIA certification or if you have the Google certification, if you already have IT support experience, get the CCST networking one maybe or the CCNA or the Network Plus. Um, overall, I see this as an iffy certification. I don't see it as a big uh, plus for many people. Um, if your school is going to pay for it, obviously that's a great thing. You're going to get a credential from Cisco for free. That's obviously a whole different ball game. But if you're going to pitch in $125 to get a certification that won't really do much for you, I don't know if it's completely worth it. Um, I personally wouldn't pay $125 to take it, but 
I would take it if someone paid it, paid for it for me. So that's kind of my two cents on this certification. Comment down below if you have any questions or if you want to uh, give your opinion on this certification. Thank you guys for watching. This is Jamesy Tech. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. Join the Discord down below. Jamesy.live slash Discord. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.